All right, folks, it's time to talk about Godzilla x Kong the New Empire. Godzilla Kong the New Empire. I've seen people say you're supposed to drop the X. I don't know. I just think it's a dumb title. I walked into this as a massive Godzilla fan. I don't want to go through my history as a fan of this character, but as a kid, I collected all the box sets of the 80s and 70s films even the terrible ones. When it comes to this MonsterVerse series that Legendary Pictures has been creating over the last decade or so, I really enjoyed Gareth Edwards' Godzilla from 2014. It was a much more grounded, realistic take on what would it look like if Godzilla were real. It wasn't a flawless film. I wasn't a huge fan of some of the human characters and some of the decisions made with the human characters, particularly around the midpoint of the film, but it did handle the spectacle quite well. And I think it did a good job of using Godzilla sparingly and more so focusing again on the death and destruction that happens at a human level. The sequels on the other hand are definitely more hit or miss because they get bigger, sillier, more bombastic, more colorful. Granted, I don't think that's the wrong direction to take this franchise. I mean, if you're going to continue the series and Godzilla and Kong are no longer going to be the villains of their stories, instead there's just going to be a bigger, badder monster they have to face, you might as well go big and silly with it because I just don't think it would work to try and portray that in a serious way. So needless to say, with the exception of Gareth Edwards' Godzilla, I think my favorite film in the series was probably Godzilla vs. Kong, which was also directed by this film's director, Adam Weingard. But I also want to be clear that I don't think this franchise has a single entry that is great per se, just fun. Like Godzilla vs. Kong, I sat down on my couch and watched that on HBO Max and just had a damn good time. It was dumb, the characters are paper thin, the story is paper thin, but the monster action was really fun, well shot, and it still had that kaiju spectacle to it where the monsters are always fighting in human populated areas massive cities and you see the destruction and the carnage adds a lot of fun to it. However, if I had to point out my biggest criticism with pretty much every film in this franchise, it's the human characters and I, I don't understand why it's so difficult to write human characters that aren't complete shit. I'm not asking for riveting character arcs, I'm not asking for Shakespeare here, really. I just want human characters that serve more of a purpose beyond delivering exposition. And that's gonna be a big criticism that I talk about going forward in Godzilla x Kong The New Empire, which somehow has even less of a plot than its predecessor. The story here is, I mean, we have a couple of returning characters, Rebecca Hall, I I'm not gonna say any of the character names because quite frankly, I don't remember them, but I know the actors. Uh, in addition to her, we have Brian Tyree Henry's character from the previous film coming back. As he, he's like a podcaster, a conspiracy theorist, and that's about all there is to his character. Just like a lot of the people in this, they, they have one trait. They have one trait and that's it. The little girl who is like the last survivor of the Skull Island tribe or whatever is back as well. And she's having psychic visions that something is coming. Something big is bothering Kong and Godzilla and they're acting erratically. It's kind of the same you know, triggering event that they used in the last one. I'll warn you Godzilla fans out there that this is not a very Godzilla-centric film. It actually focuses on Kong much more. And I think if I heard that before watching this movie, I'd be nervous, but quite frankly, King Kong was one of the best parts of this. I actually really became a Kong fan watching this because he has more personality and more growth than most of the human characters. And Wow, I can't believe I just said that. But the structure of this film was disappointing to me. The first two acts are bogged down by exposition. They're outright boring at times, putting in a lot of forced humor. Ugh, it's just, they're trying to turn it into a Marvel film at times. It really does feel like that Marvel type of humor where they're just throwing random jokes at the wall and seeing what sticks. While the humans are doing their dumb stuff, Godzilla's off doing his own thing, Kong's off doing his own thing, and then eventually they converge and there are other monsters involved and there's a bunch of big brawls that are very entertaining and satisfying, but it took a long time to get to them in this one. And once again, while I do think that Godzilla vs. Kong of the sequels executed the balance of human to monster stuff the best, I did not care for the Hollow Earth lore because I think it takes away part of what makes kaiju movies fun in that, once again, you're watching things unfold in human populated areas. So you have that human connection. Even if you're not connected to the characters, you still feel like you're like, oh, I recognize that building and I recognize that monument. And it's cool that they're fighting in these human populated areas. And Hollow Earth is such a boring setting compared to that because it's just 
wide open jungle, essentially. The monsters may as well be six feet tall. Not only because it takes away that human scale, but also because this movie messes with gravity and other things, and the monsters move so fast at times that it feels cartoonish. And some people want that out of this. I just think it goes too far with that cartoonish side. And the excuse that I often see people make is that Godzilla could levitate in some of the old ones. Have you seen some of the 70s movies like Godzilla vs. Megalon? And yes, I have, and that's one of my least favorites for a reason. I want these movies to be big in scale and dumb and silly, but there's gotta be a limit somewhere, and it crosses that line more often than I want it to. Going back to the human characters though, this is definitely the smallest cast that they've worked with so far, and that sounds like a good thing, but somehow they still screw up these human characters. All they do is stand around and explain things. As these characters are introduced, they give us like one trait. For instance, Dan Stevens, who is really trying his hardest here to be charismatic and fun, He's like a, a titan veterinarian, essentially. He's Kong's dentist at the beginning, and that's his character trait. That's about all he is. And then from there on, he's comic relief and delivering exposition or listening to other characters deliver exposition, and that's it. Rebecca Hall is the monarch scientist, so that's, that's her identity. That's her entire identity, aside from her relationship with uh, the, the young girl. I'm sorry, I can't remember her name but they almost give us somewhat of an arc between the two of them and her trying to respect what this child wants to do with her life, but it's so paper thin. This is like three lines of dialogue that we're talking about, and that's not enough to actually get me to care about these people. I wanna tread lightly when I talk about the other kaiju monsters that are in this because some of them were not in the trailers, and I was honestly kinda of surprised to see a couple of returning faces as well as some new ones that were not talked about at all in the marketing either. However, the trailers do show us this mini King Kong who is actually pretty adorable and hilarious at the same time. He got a couple of laughs out of me which I can't say about a lot of characters in this. Scar King is perhaps the most featured villain, you could say, and he's essentially a giant orangutan, Kong's antithesis. And he was cool. The other monsters that they introduced were cool, and I enjoyed the action sequences that featured them. It just took so long to get there. In Godzilla vs. Kong, the monster fights happen intermittently throughout the movie. And here, the stuff that you really want to see doesn't truly happen until like the last 20 minutes. And not only that, but the editing and pacing are so sloppy in the first two acts, it just jumps around from place to place, from character to character, between Godzilla and he's doing his own thing over here and Kong's doing his thing over here. Granted, I actually kind of enjoyed the Kong stuff and his confrontation with Scar King and learning that there's this heritage of other apes out there. There just isn't enough for me to enjoy and it pains me to say that. I wanna stand here and tell you that I was able to just turn my brain off and enjoy myself for two hours and watching giant CGI monsters punch each other in the face and while there was a good like 30-40% of the movie that was that, and I did enjoy that part of the movie, it's the other 60% of it that I don't think audience members are going to enjoy themselves. As a whole, I think this is very comparable to the other weak entry in this franchise, which to me is King of the Monsters. That film had some great action sequences, a lot of really cool monsters that fans of the Toho originals we're probably very pleased to see, but the human stuff, the attempt to over explain everything. Just to give you an example, they go into Hollow Earth and they uncover this new undiscovered part of Hollow Earth and inside of there there's this temple of a tribe that we never knew existed. It's just, you could cut so much of that out if you took out a bunch of the exposition and unnecessary bloated storylines in this, you could have a nice 90 minute monster mash that doesn't waste your time. And that's truly what I felt while I was watching the first two acts of this, that my time was being wasted when it could have been better spent. I do see people out there making an argument that they should be making these films with no human characters whatsoever. And I disagree with that. I think that would be just as bad because you'd basically be watching like a video game cutscene if it's just CGI for the entire film. And I do think you need that grounded human center to it to sort of put yourself in the kaiju action to immerse yourself in the destruction. But it shouldn't be this difficult to make characters that I don't hate. I'm gonna give Godzilla X Kong The New Empire two and a half out of five stars. It's really just mediocre. It's probably my least favorite of this franchise, but it's not awful, guys. I mean, if you have middle to low standards for kaiju films, you'll probably have a decent enough time, but 
This is the fifth entry now, and I think they should have been able to figure out the human to monster balance here and craft a story that at least feels somewhat comprehensible and not like it's bogged down by characters just constantly vomiting exposition to us. Okay, we're to that point in the video now where I tell you to drop down into the comments and let me know what you think of this film. And while you're at it, give me your entire ranking of the MonsterVerse, all five films. I'm curious if people share my sentiment, my enjoyment for the 2014 Godzilla and Godzilla vs. Kong. And if people agree that King of the Monsters is probably the worst, although it might have to tie with this one now. While you're at it, hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.